welcome to the FIS show. Um, your presenter today, my name is Ingo Tumpongo, and today in the studio joining me is Kim, founder and uh, managing director of Umoyo. Welcome to the show, Kim. Thank you so much. Thank it's a you. pleasure having you. It's such a pleasure to be here. My first question would be for you to tell us the story of Umoyo. Tell us um, how Umoyo started, where are you now, and how many stores you have. Yeah. It's a story, it's, and it's a beautiful story, and it's taken time. We started back in 2007 from very, very humble beginnings. Literally, uh, a flat that I was renting, that I was living in, in central Lusaka, and I converted a bedroom to my office and treatment room. I mean, that's how it started, making these green juices in the kitchen for my clients. And um, my passion was to, to help people. Uh, and using natural means to do so. Um, so I was doing nutritional consultations and running people through detoxification programs and such like. And then um, as time progressed, finally rented a, a proper house, <laughs> where, which became the Omoyo Clinic. Okay. And we were doing cutting edge therapies there because I had done, um, studied and done apprenticeships in the US working with some of the best, greatest naturopaths and, and um, natural health practitioners. And everything I'd learned, I brought back to Zambia and incorporated into our programs, you know. So we were doing things like bioresonance and live blood analysis nice. and colon hydrotherapy oh, and all yes. these things, which was a little bit before its time in Zambia, yes. to be honest. True. <laughs> but that's how we started. And then we got people onto healthier paths. And at the time, there were no quality supplements and health products mm. to support them. And that's when we opened the first health shop. And that was in arcades. Remember, there weren't that many shopping malls yes. back then. We basically had Manda Hill arcades, maybe Crossroads was there. And I was just walking past and saw an empty shop and went to the, the center mall management and asked, hey, can I, can I rent a shop? And they're like, sure, you know, and that's how it started. But back in the day, I didn't have a, a lot of employees. I painted the walls in that oh. shop. I went down to one of the compounds and got a carpenter to do the shelves. Those shelves are still in that shop there today. They've, they look a bit better than back then, but that's really how it started. And the first shipment that I brought in from South Africa was tiny, tiny, but you got to start somewhere, you know? Sure. And then it's just grown from there. And we just, kept reinvesting um, into the business. And it took a long time before we went from one to two shops. And, and that was because really we needed to build that foundation. And I was learning, I didn't know really how to run a company, so it was all new for me. Uh, but that organic growth gave me the time also to learn and to figure things out and for us to grow and become stronger as a company. Mm -hmm. And eventually we opened the second shop, the third shop, the fourth shop, and now we have nine shops. Nice. Yeah, uh, we had more, we closed three um, because it didn't work in those locations, but we have nine solid shops now, eight in Lusaka, one on the Copper Belt. We have an online shop. And then very interestingly, about two and a half years ago, out of necessity, once again, and we can delve into that, but we, we had to make a major strategic shift. And that was going from be, basically being a, a trader retailer with these retail shops to becoming a manufacturer. Uh, so now we manufacture some of our own products and drive that into all the major supermarkets, uh, wholesale and, and beyond as well. So this is really where Omoyo is heading. So we're buying local raw materials, adding value, and then pushing it through wholesale. So it's, it's been a huge journey, you know, <laughs> and there's been a lot of lessons along the way, uh, but also very, very exciting and very rewarding. Yes, it's been very interesting watching the transformation of the store. But I must say, you I see a lot of your products in the stores. Um, how are you doing your distribution? Yeah, so that's a major challenge because, you know, if you're um, supplying ShopRite and ShopRite has, what, 40 plus stores or something, you know, and then also pick and pay with 30 plus stores and choppies and cheers and so on. And um, for someone like ShopRite, they don't do the distribution for it. It's not like there's a central depot where you deliver and then they distribute yes. to all the... You, as the company supplying the products, are responsible for delivering each product to every store. It's a, it's a very big hurdle for small companies starting, you know? So within Lusaka, we've had to do our own distribution. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and that takes up a lot of resources, for sure, because you need trucks, for instance, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but outside Lusaka, we've hired uh, transportation companies. Okay. But of course, that um, affects um, the you margins. know the margins on the products. Hundred percent. That's yeah. true. That's true. And um, I noticed Moyo has positioned itself in the premier end. <coughs> You are in the leading malls. Um, is that your business strategy? Is that where you no, looking to go? Uh, so, yes, uh, our n natural health is a little bit niche, especially when we started. Um, and yes, you're right. We are in the major malls. Um, but n now that we've, you see, if you're importing, which we've been doing for quite a while, we buy as much as we can locally, but there hasn't been that much available in terms of finished natural health products. Mm -hmm. So we've been importing and um, that makes it with all the customs duties and everything, you know, it's 25% on these kind of products. It pushes the price up. So it becomes a little bit niche. It, it becomes a little bit more expensive. But now that we are able to manufacture our own products, our whole strategy is to produce quality products because that's very much in line with our brand you know quality products that are natural which is also very much our brand um, but at a affordable price so we want to create products that for a wider market otherwise we can't do wholesale you know so our new way forward is to still keep the quality and the natural but because we are buying local raw materials and adding value at a, a more affordable price but you're right Omoyo is still going to be a bit of an aspirational brand mm -hmm. Because if you say, for instance, we do a baobab juice. We do a lot of drinks, but one of our most popular one is a beautiful baobab juice. We don't flavor it with baobab. It is pure natural baobab that we put in there. And if now we're competing with another supplier who's flavoring their juice with chemicals and lots of sugar syrup and, and colorings and things like that, that's a very cheap process in comparison, you know. That's so true. if you're going to do a quality natural product, it is going to be slightly higher price, but still as, as I said, we're, we're, we're really trying to make it still competitive and affordable to a very wide market. That's yeah. true. Um, speaking on the manufacturing side, are you sourcing everything locally? And if you are, uh, how are you supporting your local suppliers? Yeah. So this is the, the wonderful thing, you know, that now that we're producing locally, we are buying from small scale farmers. Um, at the moment, a lot of it is through aggregators who aggregate from these small scale farmers. But um, we want to get to know our farmers more and more. And as we grow, we will be able to do that. But already, you know, just as a, as a wonderful example, um, we need a lot of hibiscus. Um, um, for our beautiful red passion drink, which is hibiscus cinnamon lemongrass. So we have given seed to Mokobeko prison mm -hmm. and the female inmates there grow hibiscus for us and dry it for us and then sell it back to us. Uh, through World Vision, we now have 40 small scale farmers growing hibiscus. We gave them seed to grow hibiscus for us. So as we grow and as our demand for raw materials go up, mm -hmm. then of course we'll be able to, to, to to work with more and more small-scale farmers. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, this is very much within um, our, our vision of how we want to operate. Yeah. And are you exporting your products? And if you are, who are you exporting to? Yeah, so not yet, <laughs> but it is certainly on the cards, you know? So, no, that we, we, you know, in terms of manufacturing, we've only really been doing it for two years, you know? So it's very early days for us, and there's so much we can still do to saturate the, the, the local market. We are nowhere close to that. So lots of work still to d do here in, in Zambia, but we have already started looking at mm -hmm. what would it take to export within the region to start with, you know? So we're looking at that, uh, but not quite there yet. Yeah. Um, many, if you, on a wholesale level, I know it's, it, it makes sense to sell uh, in bulk. <coughs> so are you selling, uh, are you selling any wholesales? Or are you just doing the retail? Are you? Yeah, so we will always have our retail shops. Mm -hmm. You will always find the more shops because that, that is, 
It's a way for us to interact with our customers directly. It's a way for us to test products. It's good for our brand. But the future for Omoyo, it's wholesale. Mm -hmm. It is um, increasing the volume, li like you, you alluded to, you know. Um, and wholesale margins are smaller, so you got to work on volume. Um, and that's why it's also very important that we're producing products that will appeal and be affordable to a larger market. So 100%. And, and we are already in all the shop rights and pick and pays and all the major supermarkets. And that adds up. I mean, that's more than 100 <laughs> shops that we're supplying already. And it is small, but um, I'm still proud of it because yes. we've only really been doing this for like two years, you know? So, so let's see a year from now. If you interview <laughs> me, let's see where we are then. Interesting. How many lines do you have? How many lines do you have, especially in, your, in the stores, in the supermarkets? How many lines do you run? Okay, so um, products that we manufacture, we have about five juices. We do our alkaline water, that pink water. Yes. I hope you've seen it, yes, <laughs> which is a beautiful story as well. But anyway, the pink water, we do peanut butter, we do an instant porridge. So there's a few things, and there are other products coming mm -hmm. a, a, as well. Um, so that, that's the, the products that we're currently manufacturing. So it's quite a range as well. Um, but in some of the supermarkets, we also uh, supply other products. Products. So one of our strategies to help bring prices down is that we, wherever we can, we import in bulk. Mm -hmm. So some of our top products like apple cider vinegar or coconut oil or Himalayan salt, we import in bulk and then we package under our own brand so that we can cut out some of the middlemen, you know, so we're not importing finished products because that is expensive. Mm -hmm. So some of those products that we don't actually manufacture, but we we import bulk and package here. That is also in some of the more premium supermarkets. Yeah. And are there any new products in the pipeline that you should look out for? Yes, 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 yes. I mean, the, I mentioned the instant porridge. That's yes. just been launched. And I am so excited about this one because we have put millet, sorghum, soya, and maize. Mm -hmm. So you got super nutrition from all those grains, whole grains. And then we've put our two local superfoods, baobab and moringa in there. And we fortified with vitamins and minerals. So if you haven't tried our instant porridge, I highly, highly recommend it. You just add water and stir kind of thing. Um, but otherwise, um, in very soon, we're coming out with our own range of teas. Yes. Because teas have been very popular in the Omoyo shops. But we've always we've offered a lot of loose teas. Mm. And now for the first time, we're going to be able to package them into tea bags, making it more co convenient for our consumers, you know. So I'm very excited about that. It'll be some cool flavors. Flavors, for instance, um, eucalyptus and lemongrass, which would be nice for the cold season. <laughs> yes. For those, yeah. Um, no. So uh, there are a few other products, but I'll, I'll, be, I'll wait for you to to see as they come <laughs> out. Yeah. Interesting. And um, as uh, financial insight, we noticed that you you had a clinic and you closed that clinic. Is there a reason behind the closing of the health clinic? Yeah, so that was purely a strategic decision. It wasn't making a loss or anything. It was doing well. But, you, you know, I was very much a therapist. I was working in the business and more and more my role became to manage and work on the business. And that was also when my mindset changed, you know. And um, what happened was that even though we had very well-trained therapists there that I was working alongside, a lot of people requested me and my time. And I just didn't have the time in the end, you know. Um, and the, um, we saw there was more potential with the health shops. So it was just a strategic decision to close the clinic um, and focus the attention on the health shops. And it was the right decision because also at the end of the day with business, you can't do everything, right? So you have to figure out wh wh what what will work best going forward. Don't you think now the clinic will be more beneficial with an increase in the um, preventable diseases or call them uh, non-communicable diseases? Because there's a really big increase in uh, lifestyle diseases that are um, now. Won't the clinic be a very good a very good um, shop to have? Oh, hundred percent. Yes, there are. I mean, I get calls all the time, every single week. Kim, aren't you opening up the clinic again? We miss it. You know, old clients who we helped back in the day and who want to come back and do a program with us, you know, so there is a demand for that. 100%. But, you know, 
Zambia has changed a little bit now. There are more people in this space. Yes. So I'm sure people will find uh, uh, other um, organizations who can offer these services. For Omoyo now, I think it would be to take a step back because also I have evolved as a business owner as well. And really the vision, the future for Omoyo mm -hmm. is to go strong further into manufacturing, wholesale and export. So that will be our future. But we still have a passion for health. I have a passion for health and nutrition and everything, but we will just serve people in a different way. And that is to provide and make amazing quality nutritious products like the healthy choice for people so people can have that energy go out and live their best life you know i guess i'll be one of those people calling you for a clinic but <laughs> oh. you know it's good to evolve and it's good to to actually read the market and see what's what you what you feel is really needed yeah um what are the future plans and would you say you've reached your saturation uh, point as umoyo what are you planning for the future yeah, so um, I guess, like I said before, you know, with the health shops, that's kind of um, reached a, a bit of a saturation, I would say, because, it, you know, the market here in, in Zambia, it is quite small, and what we do is a little bit niche. So the future for us, it is manufacturing. It is coming up with other amazing quality natural products that the people here and in the region really would value um, at an affordable price. You know, that, that's what we, that's what we want to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, viewers, uh, that's it, the time for us from uh, Financial Insight. Kim, it was lovely having you. Thank you so much. Is there anything that you'd like to speak about? Is there anything that you'd like to um, tell us, let us know about Moyo? No, I would just like to say, you know, like Umoyo was born out of my passion and that is what has driven that business forward. So my advice to anyone would just, you know, find your passion, follow your passion because that is what's going to give you that determination to push through when it gets tough. You have to have that perseverance because business, it ain't easy, you know. So passion for me has really been the driving force and, and the, the game changer. Well, that's it, viewers, from me, from Financial Insights, Ingo Chumpongo.